All right, everyone, it is episode time, and we are here with Barbara Corellis, author of Urban Tantra and of so many other things as well. Um, and I just want to share, which we probably already did in the intro, but we haven't done the intro yet as we record this, um, that uh, Barbara Corellis is really near and dear to my heart. Um, and when I was I think I said late 2014, so I forgot how old I was then. How old am I now? I don't know. Anyways, uh, I, was, I was in my early 30s. Ancient. And, um, yeah, I'm ancient. And uh, I took, uh, or no, I was probably 29 then. Anyways, I took um, my first kind of official Tantra training. I'd done Tantra classes, and I decided to sign up for Barbara's because I loved her book, Urban Tantra. I loved how inclusive it is um, and how it includes uh, BDSM or also links BDSM and Tantra. And a lot of times people think it's very separate, and most Tantra is very heteronormative. And, um, and so I did this five-day intensive training, or Barbara's Urban Professionals training. And for five days, we were in a room on on Folsom Street in San Francisco, uh, all practicing all these Tantra skills together, tying each other up, all kinds of wonderful things. And it totally changed my life. So um, we are really excited to have you here, Barbara, and hear and learn from you kind of in person for us, but also over a video screen. So welcome to Shameless Sex, Barbara. Thank you. I love your podcast. It's so exciting to actually be on it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're ha so happy to have you here. So we already said a little something about you in the intro that we haven't recorded yet, but we know we will. So, <laughs> But we will start with the same prompt that we do with all of our guests. Can you please tell us how you got to where you are today in the field or world of sexuality? Sure. The answer is pure, simply, and always the same. It was the AIDS crisis in the 1980s. Um, I was working in the Broadway theater, which I did for many, many years. And uh, suddenly everybody was sick and then they were dying. And by the mid eighties, mid to late eighties, I was a mess. I was pretty destroyed. I was at my edge. And I went to a healing circle founded on the principles of Louise Hay's work. Uh, she was doing the Hayride in Los Angeles. The healing circle was the equivalent in New York City. There I met Annie Sprinkle and Joseph Kramer. Joseph, founder of Sexological Body Work. Annie is Annie. <laughs> and, yeah. and we found that the three of us, we were learning to love ourselves. We were learning to forgive ourselves. We were um, growing spiritually and emotionally. And we three all had the same question. But what about sex? Because we all knew that at a certain point, people would get over their abject fear of, of dying because of, of having unprotected sex with someone. And they would just go back to, to having sex the way they did before. And it was going to be a disaster as if it wasn't already in the eighties. So um, Joseph had started um, exploring Taoist sexuality and we were looking toward the East because in the East, we were told that there were traditions uh, of sexuality that were less genital focused and more energy focused. And we went, hmm, this could be a good place to start to reinvent a sexuality for the AIDS era. So it, Joseph was exploring Taoist work and rebirthing a breathwork process that was popular in the day. And we started exploring Tantra. And we would go out and we would study with somebody and we would look for nuggets of something useful. And if we thought we had something, we would bring it back to the circle. We would fashion it in such a way that we thought the, in this case, primarily gay men would get it. And if it worked, we kept it and went, okay, that's gonna work. And then we go out and look for something else. And that's essentially how what became Urban Tantra got built. It was a, a form of Neo-Tantra, meaning Clearly, this is not ancient Hindu classical Tantra, but it was very true to the spirit of Tantra because Tantra throughout the hundreds of years it's been around has consistently reinvented itself and consistently reinvented itself to suit the times. It's always been uh, because Tantra in essence says you can reach spiritual enlightenment, we'll use their terminology, simply by walking through the world in a particular conscious manner, by squeezing all there is from life and using tantric principles to do that. And we'll talk about how that relates to sex in a moment. Um, you can have not only the 
you see as life here on earth, but also realize some important spiritual truths. Now that was really appealing to us because we wanted a way of having sex that was physically safe, meaning no body fluids, that was emotionally and even maybe physically healing, and that had a strong spiritual component because people were dying and when your friends are dying, you really need something in the spiritual realm to comfort you. And most of the people during those times had been kicked out of the religion they were born into because they were gay and because they had AIDS. So Tantra kind of ticked all the boxes. And indeed we were able to find hot, mind-blowing, spirit-lifting ways to have sex that did not involve spreading AIDS through bodily fluids. So it worked. Wow. That is such a great story of your intro into the field of sexuality and so necessary and so complete because that, that touches me so much because I've like watched so many, I grew up in the eighties, but I was too young to learn about AIDS. And now when I watch documentaries, I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, oh my God. So thank you, Barbara. Thank you for that, that work. And like, I was getting a little teary eyed because I was like, that is so beautiful that you were able to, to initiate this, um, this move movement. And so any, I just wanted to say that. So thank you, thank you. because, um, thank you really you. did strike a chord with me. Um, so my question for you is, uh, probably a really big one, even though it's a short question is how do you personally define orgasm? That is a super great question. And you're right. It's a big one, but I'll cut straight to it. I define orgasm as mm. a release of tension and an expansion of energy flowing through the body, mind and connecting us to spirit, as opposed to some more traditional definitions of orgasm, such as a sexual climax attained by stimulation of the genitals and other erogenous zones or slight somewhere between the two, a release of accumulated tension and energy. All those are components of orgasm, but the fullness of orgasm in my world is that first definition. It's something that feels bigger than the being containing it. It's almost like your molecules step a few feet apart and you become both larger and more ephemeral and sort of can become part of all that is. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that because, well, for so many reasons, but also because everyone is so different and an orgasm is just limited to the genitals. One, I think it's just limiting just some genitals contracting and therefore you had an orgasm, uh, but everyone's different. Some people have spinal cord injuries and they can't have orgasms through their genitals anymore. And, and there's, or trauma, you know, there's so many different reasons why it's, it's really helpful to expand our idea of um, orgasm and um, to be inclusive in ways that might include all folks in the way that they might want to show up. And we can add new things to the menu. How about people who, who have had genital orgasms and not particularly just nice ones for 35 years and now we're like kind of over it? Yeah. <laughs> They're not even really interested. And so what do we do? And a yeah. lot of these people are vulva owners, owners and we, we shame them and we tell them they're broken and we tell them they need medicine. Yeah. You know, pharma, big pharma medicine, mm-hmm. usually when in reality, what they really want to go out and do is make art, travel the world, have dance gasms, have art gasms, have travel gasms. Mm-hmm. And I, in ecstasy is necessary. Sorry, I wrote about this. I asked people, name me orgasmic experiences, ecstatic experiences other than sex. I've never had more answers to a question that I've ever asked, like on social media, hundreds. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in what they are, ecstasy is necessary. I listed them all. (laughs) But but orgasm and an ecstatic experience is so much bigger than just something that happens in your genitals. Orgasm doesn't even happen in your genitals. It happens in your brain anyway. (laughs) Rant over. I'm sorry I interrupted. No, rant away. I love it. Largest sex organ there, your brain, everyone. And, and also just adding more things to the menu to, to kind of spice things up. Like you said, it maybe someone is 35 years and kind of sick of just having, you know, whatever penetrative sex or um, I've been using my vibrator or however I've been masturbating with my hand. And, and, you know, it's nice to learn something new or different, or maybe I don't want to touch other bodies, but I still want to be connected to something bigger, which brings us to this idea of energy orgasms or energy orgasms, which a lot of people, I think when they hear about it, they're like,
like, what the fuck? I mean, isn't it, does the orgasm already have energy? So can you tell our listeners, and by the way, Annie Sprinkle lives here in the mm. mountains of Santa Cruz and would teach at Pure Pleasure. And I have seen Annie Sprinkle on the floor having energy work. Yeah, oh, and I was like, oh my it God. It was so powerful. Yeah. Like the most powerful energy orgasms for like that blew my little minutes. Wisconsin mind yeah. at the time. I was like, wow, yeah. that's oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen I never knew you could do yeah. that. <laughs> and then in your training, I remember we practiced that and you did this guided session. And anyway, so what is an energy orgasm? And can just about anyone learn one? Yes. And Annie and I learned them from the same teacher at the same time. <laughs> it's a tradition we share. Um, <laughs> an energy orgasm is, as I define orgasm, remember that definition, um, it's an orgasm achieved without genital stimulation. Yeah, and yes, anyone can have one. I'm sure there might be somebody on the planet who can't, but I haven't met them yet, that's all. More, more completely of an answer. Their full body orgasmic ecstatic experiences that you feel all usually feel kind of everywhere, kind of all over your body. And interestingly enough, most people feel them everywhere in their body except in their genitals. It's the rare person that also feels them in their genitals. But that means that if you learn how to have a breath and energy orgasm and then you combine it with gen genital stimulation, wow, right? But the breath and energy orgasm itself is certainly the tension release is absolutely there. And a feeling of freedom is what most people report. And the other bit of it I, I think is really important is that it can, it can produce profound emotion gasms, like giggle gasms, cry gasms, um, even anger gasms. And Annie actually has in one of her films uh, uh, an example of a really good anger gasm. Um, anger in its pure energetic form, not anger as violence directed towards somebody else. People get that a little confused. But usually giggle gasms and cry gasms, and often people alternate between the two. Sometimes they don't know why they're laughing or why they're crying, but it just feels really good. And at the end, they feel lighter and cleansed and free. And one of the breath and energy orgasms teach us so much. One of the things they demonstrate so profoundly for me is the emotional release part of orgasm and how important it is. I think that we learn how to have orgasms depending on how we grew up and in general in the west those orgasms need to be controlled you can't laugh too hard you can't cry too hard god knows you can't get angry you can't make too much noise you can't fart you can't you you, you, you cannot be free in your expression you better keep it within keep it keep it on the road you know, no, no off track adventures. <laughs> and that's really, really a shame that orgasm, which was clearly in my view, designed to be such a freeing, enlightening, powerful experience is tamed down to something uh, acceptable by society. I'm doing that in air quotes. Anyway, yeah, my rant on. So sleepgasm is an energy orgasm. So you're talking about breathgasms. Like if I have an orgasm, I sleep, that's an energy orgasm as an well. En I think so. I think an energy orgasm, and some people can do it by simply thinking. Hmm. They can just think themselves into a physical hmm. orgasm. That's also an energy orgasm in my book. I need to learn that skill. I know. Not, every, <laughs> I, I, not everybody can. I have done it. Mm -hmm. But it's certainly not nothing that I can reliably, you know, produce. Whereas the breath and energy orgasm, easy. So you've talked about, I think you've talked about a lot of the 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 what and then the why is obviously the the transcending yourself from this kind of traditional bubble that a lot of our Western culture locks us into, um, or maybe a box, however you want to think of it. Um, and some other reasons, which I'm, I'm just kind of hearing you say, you've also talked about the how, and we're going to get into tips because our listeners love tips, but will you dive a little bit deeper into the, the, the why folks sure. out there, if they're like, oh, I do like my genital orgasms that I have, but why, why do I want to have energy orgasms and how is this going to benefit me? Like, great question. 
Great mm -hmm. question. Do I have to trade one for the other? No. Yeah. The breath and energy orgasm technique teaches so that teaches you and shows you and demonstrates for you so many more possibilities of your sexuality than you might discover any other way, which is one of the reasons I love it. First of all, it feels completely unique when you lie down and with a little imagination and a lot of breath can go into this completely altered full body, <clears throat> excuse me, ecstatic state and stay there hanging out in the altered for minutes, you kind of go, if this is possible and nobody told me, what else out there is possible that no one's told me about? What am I missing? You know, there's a whole nother realm of experience that clearly I haven't visited. That's one thing. Um, I've seen it lift the ceiling of possibilities for people in all sorts of areas of their life. Secondly, the healing power of the emotional release is really profound. I have an example from this week. One of our colleagues, Amy, uh, another graduate of the program, uh, pinged me on social media saying, thank you for the breath and energy orgasm meditation, which I recorded. She said, I was caught on the highway in a gunfight. I went, a gunfight? Yes, gunfire and whizzing around her car going on on the highway. And she was obviously traumatized. And one of the things she used to help her get through the trauma beyond talking to friends and some other techniques was the breath and energy orgasm meditation hmm. because it physically helped her release the trauma from her body. And if you studied any trauma, theory stuff. Uh, humans, uh, animals are really good at shaking off trauma and moving on without it. We're not so good at it. We're better at holding it. And this meditation helped her let go of that trauma. Hopefully no one listening is going to be in that exact situation anytime soon, but just saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> plus all the simple techniques involved in having a breath and energy orgasm, which are simply breathing, using your as imagination a bit, a little bit of movement, a bit of sound. Um, all of that contributes to better genital orgasms. People think that, and are, 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 are trained to think, taught to think, um, all about the physical hows and whys and how to's of orgasm. And nobody explains what's going on energetically, the effect that the deep breathing, ah, ah, when you're having great sex is having on orgasm production uh, or sounds. They're act making sounds actually makes for better orgasms. Mm -hmm. So does some movement. Even people who like to be tied up because they're tied up, they're moving against whatever they're tied up with. And that's a kind of movement that will produce a stronger orgasm. So the breath and energy orgasm has all these little um, techniques, little teacher techniques in there and all of those things, all the techniques that it takes to do a breath and energy orgasm, all of which are very simple, lead to better genital sex, period, full stop. That's <laughs> why it's worth doing. Yeah. And, and then if you combine the techniques, you can sort of have an energy, you can not sort, you can have an energy orgasm and a genital orgasm mixed together. Wow. How fun is that? It's uh, very fun. It's yeah, very think, fun. Yeah, it's very it, was, fun. it was doing the whoop. You gotta tune in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arsenio Hall. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Double orgasm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Triple orgasm. Um, I, every time I've done your energy orgasm practice, uh, whether it was in your workshop or on my own, or and I also you recently during the pandemic. Well, I guess we're still in it, but you know that you did an online <laughs> class and it was on Zoom. And it was like maybe a two hour class. And I was surprised there was like 75, 80, hundred people on different screens, all practicing together. And we laid down and you're, you know, it's fully clothed. We're not touching ourselves. And you guided us in this half an hour journey. My partner was here too. We did it together. And I feel after that, I feel like it's the best spa visit slash dance class slash sex session that I have ever had. I feel so alive. Like every single cell is vibrating. Um, I'm just, I'm so kind of rejuvenated and just, it feels incredible. Um, and so I just, but then I later I'm like, so why am I not doing that every day? You know, because <laughs> I, mean, I think there's a, there's a part, you know, and I guess we'll ask the tips here too. And I'll make it a two-part question here. So I'm sure listeners are like, okay, 
but how do I do this? So can you, can teach us a little bit about the how, and then also, is this something people can do kind of like as a quickie thing? Is it like a five minute version or does it always have to be like a 20, 30 minute thing? Good question. Good question. It's when you first start, it'll take you a little longer to perhaps feel the effects of it. When it's in your muscle memory, it's amazing how much more quickly you can hit that, that state. Uh, a chiropractor described it to me once as you're literally creating new neural pathways. And once they're there, they're there for life. <laughs> so no, they don't go away. They're really let's hear it for those neural <laughs> pathways. Okay. So let's do um, just a little setup. How, what do you need to do to get into the space to have an energy orgasm? So let's everybody take a breath. <sighs> Relax your jaw. Kind of do a fake yawn, or if it's the end of the day for you, a real one. Either is fine. Just to get the sense of that open throat. And then with relaxed jaw, relaxed lips, just take a very gentle breath in through the mouth. And let it go with a sigh. We want an energizing breath and breathing through the mouth is more energizing, but we don't want a tense breath. Tense breath would look and sound something like this. That would put you in an altered state, but probably not one you'd like very much. But if you stay relaxed, kind of casual about it, I like to say the intentions on the inhale and you just let go of the exhale. And you breathe as fast or as slowly as you like, completely up to you, keep breathing. Now, first and foremost, this is a breath process. So if you lose the plot on the imagination or on anything else, that's fine, just keep breathing. But now imagine, keep breathing. Now imagine while you're breathing that there is like a tap root. And that tap root is between your genitals and your anus, right at the perineum. And this imaginary tap root, breathe into it and send it down into the center of the earth. You can imagine it in any way you like. Some people are good at visualizing, other people are better at feeling. Just Imagine that root there and imagine as you breathe, you're breathing that pure molten energy that they told you, taught you about in geology in eighth grade, that molten center of the earth, that hot energy up into your lower belly. All you're doing is breathing with the intention of moving energy up your body. And now let it go a little higher up your body, maybe into your solar plexus. Keep breathing. Good, great, great, great. Now let it move up to your heart. Doesn't matter if you can feel this or not, just fake it. Fake it till you feel it. Okay, so there's all that energy and you're breathing it into your heart. Awesome, you're doing great. Now breathe it up into your throat. Great, you can make a sound at your throat like, ah. Let it move up into your head. Imagine the energy filling up your body, coming in through the earth and going out the top of your head. Now take a few fuller, faster breaths. And take the next breath in, take it in, take it in, take it in and hold it. Hold that breath, hold that breath, hold it, hold it, hold it. 
and let go. Do nothing. Just notice you were only breathing for like a minute. <laughs> this was the quickie demo version. But just notice, I can feel a little, little bit lightheaded and a little bit altered. How about you? I feel kind of high. Okay, I was gonna say I feel kind of high right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. Oh, tingly so and like like I like smoked some nice CBD, but it had like <laughs> a little bit of something else in there that's real nice. <laughs> the closing of the eyes helped too. I think because I keep my eyes open sometimes during meditation, but closing my eyes, I can really focus on where I think my breath is going. Mm. So I opened my eyes a couple times because I was like my dog was scratching my leg, and I was like, <laughs> ah, damn it! But Life came in. That was really good, and I'm like, wait, closing the eyes, and then the throat, and focusing on the point of where you were you were speaking to and i like the breathing through the mouth i always concentrate on breathing through the nose but breathing through the mouth is that's special as a life practice good for you breathing through the nose is really good and breathing through the nose is absolutely the healthy way to live your life there is no question about that and when we're having super passionate sex we're not breathing through our nose we're breathing like <laughs> We're making sounds and we're breathing through our mouth. So to, to enhance that particular altered state of consciousness, to, to dive more deeply into it, breathing through the mouth really helps. And I encourage people to stay relaxed as you heard. Now it gets to a point where the breath is breathing you. And I've certainly seen many people in breath and energy orgasm sessions wind up doing ah, 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 fine but that's not that's where their body took them it's not what they're imposing on their body so the staying relaxed and not pushing too hard while you're breathing through your mouth is also helpful which is also what we were doing mm. and you got high anyway yep so it's <laughs> It's an altered state of consciousness that people often describe as lightheaded, to which I reply, could we all not stand to be a little bit lighter in the head? <laughs> I know I could. Yeah, me too. I'm heavy in the head, yep. often. Heavy in the head. <laughs> Just from what I've done with you before too, you also teach, you also add in um, pelvic floor mm -hmm. release and or re tighten and releasing as well. I mean, that's kind of some other things that you add there. Um, that people, if they want to learn more, that's, I mean, it's in your book, it's also, which we'll talk more about that later, about how to find that. But that's something else that people want to learn more that you add, you kind of add these layers to it. And that thing that you just said with, you know, visualization and breath, that's like a, you know, starting point, but there are other compo components. And then you can be laying on the floor. That was like the, that was like the yeah. moose bouche. Yeah. That was a moose bouche. Just, yeah. Now you can move into the big bush. <laughs> I want. I like the bush. That's good. That was one bite of the truffle, yes. of the chocolate truffle cake. Yes. Yeah. You, you get the whole cake. Yeah. And um, I, I'll tell you about it in a little while. But I do have a guided meditation. It's inexpensive, and you can do this at home. Mm -hmm. Take a bit longer, and once, like I said, once you not, have learned how to do it, you can pretty well uh, just decide how long you want to do it for. It doesn't have to be a half an hour or whatever. So a question for you now is going to go in terms of relationships and how energy orgasms can apply to folks relationships because we talked about on your own. Is this something that partners can share with each other or they can just add to their sex lives on their own or with their partner. And I know you have ways so just please, um, please enlighten us Barbara because you're so great. Mm -hmm. One of the things I most like to do with couples is to teach them modified forms of energy orgasms that they can do facing each other and eye gazing. So like they could breathe together and eye gaze. And this doesn't have to be for half an hour, like I said. And at the end of that breath and energy uh, demo, there was that little breathe more quickly and hold it. I call that a clench and hold. And when you've built up a lot of energy, a lot of breath energy and sex energy, and you breathe quickly together, as a charging breath, and then you're looking in each other's eyes and keep your eyes open, hold your breath, you actually, and then let go, you actually have the experience of having an open-eyed orgasm with your partner. Mm. And it's mind-blowing fun. 
everyone just looked me in the eyes like a crazy person. That's kind of scary what she just did, but yeah. what you just explained is kind of, it's pretty hot. Actually, I'm like, it's pretty huh. hot. It's yeah. pretty hot. It's and hot. it's emotionally connecting. It's mm. intimate. In in intimacy sometimes you know is is essentially when we use the word nowadays in just public discourse it has it's about as appealing as the word oversharing you know it's it's got this veneer of oh not that to it when in reality intimacy is that feeling of being incredibly comfortable and incredibly embraced unconditionally by another and these practices lead to that. Now, this breath technique can be combined with erotic massage. You can give your partner an erotic massage and that detailed instructions for that are in urban Tantra. Um, and with them breathing like this, and you can end that erotic massage with a clench and hold and just hold the space for your partner to go on a journey. It's an incredible gift to give somebody and it's a really good thing to practice for people who are just burned out on penis and vagina missionary position sex. I suggested it for numerous couples, clients, and it really has just opened the door for so many possibilities because those erotic massages can look like anything. They can Is that be- a pelvic floor clench though or the whole body clench? Is it's, it, like it starts with the pelvic, great question. It starts with the pelvic floor, the abdomen and the butt, and then you can bring in the whole rest of the body. But if you just clench the pelvic floor, abs, butt, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. When I've done it with you in the past and then at the end, you know, at the 25, 30 minute, and you, you, after you've been tightening and releasing the pelvic floor with all breath and the imagination, all these things for a while, and then you do that hold the, the whole body, you hold the whole body and you hold your breath for a, a while as well. Maybe it's like 30 seconds or something. Um, and then that's what you get. I was like, it get these visuals. And then when you release, oh my God, it's like the best release you've ever, ever had. But at that point, it was the entire body. But we had just been doing the pelvic floor yeah. throughout the rest of it. And yeah, yeah right. Potent medicine. So this you so you have online, you have a guided meditation for this. Um, and this is also an urban tantra. And we already talked a little bit about urban tantra to our listeners here. But can you share a little bit more? I really love how it weaves together, as I said before, BDSM and Tantra, also sex magic, though. Can you tell our listeners a little I bit of what, what they can expect from urban tantra? My intention for urban tantra is that people can learn that sexuality and spirituality, what Ever you call spirituality, whatever that is for you, something bigger than you. Let's leave it at that. Those two things are powerfully in interconnected. In fact, they're not only interconnected, one is the logical result of the other. Sex will eventually lead to spirit and spirit will eventually lead to sex in the body. They're just connected. And I think one of my intentions with Urban Tantra is to help people find that. Tantra is an embodied spiritual practice. I know I keep using the spirit word. I know that's going to turn people off, but it is a way of going deeper. So much of Western thought has said that the body is the problem. And Tantra says, no, the body is the way through. It's the vehicle to something bigger, something truer, something more wonderful. Connection with another person is one of those things, but also connection with yourself. And um, I think a lot of Tantra books get, are exclusively partner focused. And I believe that you can have a Tantra relationship with yourself. You can have a Tantra relationship with a partner. You can have it with a group. You can have it with something in spirit, my belief. I'm pretty sure people will leave having realized that breath is the single most powerful erotic tool that exists. Sorry, I know you have a store full of other wonderful things, but breath is actually better than all of them. It's always uh, with you too, so it's, yeah, totally. it's free of charge, yeah. unless you're on but Mars. All those things in the store, when done with breath, are twice as much fun, so just consider that. <laughs> And that so many of the most powerful sexual components are not, um, are not genitally based. They are the way you touch. They are uh, uh, the speed at which you touch, the pressure at which you touch, 
the mindfulness you bring. It actually makes sex simpler in a weird way because when you slow down and, and really appreciate just the touch of something on your skin or someone's embrace and go into that embrace or go into that touch completely, you really don't need seven other supermarket tabloid techniques. <laughs> you just don't. And that's, that's the, and I also wrote Urban Tantra for people who thought they weren't right for Tantra and Tantra wasn't right for them and they would never fit in a Tantra community, they would never belong and they'd hate it. I wrote it for all those people. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I wanted all the people who thought that Tantra wasn't for them in the room with me. I wanted to make new friends. I wanted other cool adventurous seekers in the room, including kinky people. And what is very clear and has gotten more and more clear over the years is that the way most people practice BDSM has with its emphasis on consent, would it, when it, with its emphasis on extreme care and detail um, is very much more like Tantra than a whole lot of quote unquote traditional sex is. That ta BDSM can be and often is a very tantric practice. I believe you wrote this book for me as well, Barbara, <laughs> because I always thought it was way too woo for Tantra. I, I'm like, I'm, I, I thought, excuse me, thank you. you. Tantra was way too woo for me. And I was like, I'm not in that world. I'm not some wooey individual. I love yoga and I can get down with some of the stuff. That's why I love the urban piece of that because it makes me feel like it's, it's almost cool. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the, the, the ancient nature of Tantra and it's, and it's, uh, and, and where it, it stemmed from and, and its intention and in what I know of it. And also I, I think of some of the, 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 looking at old books about Tantra and, and it was way too, for me, like religious and I, and I'm not religious. Right. So I loved also what you spoke to about being spiritual because we, I think about it as connecting to source, like connecting to whatever source, right. Because I can look at these trees and feel like I'm one with those. So a lot of what you said resonated with me and I am appreciative of this book. Amy talks about your book on the regular, she quotes you. She's like, as Barbara Coretta says, yeah. <laughs> X, Y, Z. And so, I mean, she's had so many quotes of, of you and, and meeting you has been so fantastic because you are, you're an inspiration to this world, not only of <laughs> Tantra, uh, not only to BDSM and kink and, and energetic orgasms, but to, to me as, as a sex educator and a person. So thank you for, for this work that you're doing. And um, I don't want you to go. I don't want to be selfish and keep you here all day. Okay. No, it's getting late on the East coast. Um, so it brings me to the question of what other offerings, cause I know you have things coming up and, um, if people want to work with you, uh, perhaps take some of your courses, uh, can you, uh, explain where to find you, your book, sure. all the things, please. Yep. My books, urban Tantra, ecstasy is necessary, luxurious loving. They're available wherever you buy books in whatever format you like. Um, Urban Tantra is the one that's available as an audiobook as well. The other two aren't yet. As I said, you can learn how to have an energy orgasm with my pre-recorded uh, guided meditation. Just go to barbaracarellis.com, look under books and MP3s, you'll find it there. Um, given that the pandemic is still with us and a bit unpredictable, you might say, the only in-person workshops I'm doing right now are my urban Tantra professional training programs uh, because they are like week long residentials and we can make agreements about safe protocols in those um, easily. We can make them easily. Uh, my next one is in upstate New York in April of 2022. And the one after that is in the UK in October. Uh, the fact that I'm not doing um, in-person workshops means good news for people who live all the places I can't get to right now. Online, we can all meet together and um, I'll be doing some online workshops again this coming spring, that is to say 2022. And just go to barbacorrells.com, look for my upcoming events or go and sign up on my mailing list and I'll tell you when they start registering. Um, and if you're really eager for a workshop right now, tonight, uh, go 
look at orgasms with spirit. Love the title, pretty much what all my work is about. Orgasms with Spirit, it's a recorded workshop and it's available also on my website. Yeah. All right. Thank well, you. There were only, well, there was only yeah. one fruit fly sacrifice during this <laughs> recording, everyone. Barbara took it for the team. She breathed that in. She breathed she that orgasm in. With that thing. And you know what? <laughs> if she would have had a glass of wine, she could have sacrificed the fruit fly to the wine. So Ooh. that leads me to. That's what I was looking for the whole yes, time. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I'm talking about margins wine, y'all. Not that uh, you want your fruit flies in your wine, but it happens sometimes if you're in wherever, Rhode Island or Amy's home where <laughs> I am. I've also almost inhaled a couple. And we love margins wine because. It's small batch, boutique, woman-made wine. It's actually locally sourced here in Santa Cruz, but she gets grapes from all over California, from underrepresented areas, regions, and underrepresented varietals, meaning you might not have heard of the wines she's making. Go check out all you have to do, go check it out. All you have to do is sign up on marginswine.com for the newsletter. There's only like three releases a year, y'all. So go check it out. Now, Barbara, you are fantastic. I'm gonna yeah. breathe you in right now. <sighs> Ah. I think I'll go check out Margin's wine. Sounds delicious. <laughs> Please do. It is delicious. And to all of you delicious, shameless sex listeners out there, we love you so much. I just invite you right now, go to iTunes, search for Shameless Sex, give us five stars. We read every single review. It helps folks out there find more amazing humans, authors, and just innovators like Barbara Corellis and others on our show. We love you. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Ciao for now.